Chapter five is overwhelming, and truthfully, it's where a lot of people give up, and I don't want that to be used. So in this video, I'm gonna go through the only 14 terms or topics that you really need to focus on memorizing to do well on the exam. The first term, which encompasses a lot of stuff in this chapter, is the human movement system. You guys might also see that listed as the HMS in parentheses. And this is really just understanding that the skeletal system, the muscular system, and the neurological system all work together to coordinate movement. Your next term is the kinetic chain. And this one just talks about the fact that our body is this interconnected linkage of joints and muscles and kinetic, meaning forces, talks about how these forces translate through the body. Nothing is disconnected, it all works together when it comes to the kinetic chain. The nervous system can be a complex topic, but the main thing that you wanna keep in mind is that the nervous system is the communication system. You can think of it as like the text message system of the body, helping us gather in information from the outside environment, from what's going on inside, and then turn that into reactions and movements with the human body. Mechanoreceptors are specialized structures that respond to mechanical changes in the body. And the two that you guys need to focus on inside the material are the muscle spindles and the Golgi tendon organs. Make sure you know what they do and what they respond to. Make sure you guys know the difference between the somatic and the autonomic nervous system. And the easiest way to remember that autonomic kind of sounds like automatic. So it's gonna help govern all the automatic processes. You don't really wanna be thinking about like your heart beating, digestion, things that are happening in the background versus the somatic nervous system is more like exercises, actions, thinking about doing something that creates movement. Proprioception is a term that shows up a lot inside of your NASM material. And the simplified explanation is that it's your body's ability to understand where it is in space. This plays a big role in understanding the stabilization level of the OPT model. You don't need to go in great detail when it comes to the bones, but you do need to know the difference between the axial and the appendicular skeleton. Axial, think axis, axis of rotation. This is gonna encompass our skull and our vertebral column versus our appendicular skeleton is gonna be more of the appendages, the bones of the arms and the legs. Wolf's Law is a very common test question, and you don't need to memorize a lot when it comes to the bones, but you do wanna know this, because it describes the process of bone remodeling and the fact that bones only remodel along the lines of stress. When it comes to mastering muscles, you guys need to know that myofibrils are the contractile elements of a muscle cell. This is the actin and myosin that you guys read about in your material. As you guys are getting into excitation contraction coupling and just understanding muscle contraction, you wanna make sure you know what a motor unit is. And this is gonna be a motor neuron in all of the muscle fibers that it innervates and helps to contract. Sliding filament theory can be a really comprehensive, maybe overwhelming concept, but what you guys need to take away from this is that this is just the step-by-step -step process that happens in order for us to have muscle contraction, in order for us to have that crossover of actin and myosin inside the muscle cell. The final topic and term you guys need to know inside of chapter five is making sure you know the difference, the detailed difference between type one and type two muscle fibers. And if you guys wanna cheat sheet on this one, make sure you check out table 5-3 inside your textbook.